Two newly paired cops who are complete opposites must put aside their differences in order to catch a gang of drug smugglers. Lethal Weapon is up next on Inside Movie. Uh, welcome to another episode of Inside Movies. Uh, right now we're capping off our Christmas month. Uh, we've done Krampus, we've done Love Actually, and uh, Jingle All The Way. Uh, and previously, uh, we've done Die Hard and Gremlins, so go check out all those previous episodes. Uh, but today, uh, my name is George McHale, I'm a comic book maker, and I am joined by writer-illustrator, GMB Kamichuk, novelist, Andrew Buckley, and the editor-in-chief of Merck Publishing, Murphy. Uh, so let's get into Lethal Weapon. What do we like about it? What's the good? Can I preface <clears throat> by saying, dear viewer, we spent a long time watching movies that George asked us to watch in the action <laughs> <clears throat> milieu from the 80s. And they all starred Steven Seagal and they were awful. <laughs> I'd forgotten. And there's no nostalgia that can rescue those movies for me. So I had liked lethal weapon and i was really afraid that i was gonna learn to hate it anew george this movie's pretty good it holds up it's a pretty well, good movie yeah no this was actually andrew's recommendation andrew loves uh, lethal weapon well, as well i do because I, I, but i did after i suggested it, i did have the same fear greg because this this uh this show of ours has ruined so many movies that i thought i loved uh but then and i, I had love actually new, like no 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 i still love Love Actually, <laughs> but i remember loving lethal weapon and I, I figured i could actually probably make the notes without ever watching it again but i really wanted to watch it again because it's been like easily a decade maybe more since i watched it and i love i mean there's some parts that don't age well on this movie but otherwise it's it's the first buddy cop movie i think like it's their chemistry is amazing yeah yeah so much fun to watch let me uh let me also say that there's a the the real difference here is that the caliber of the actors who are starring in this actioner basically leave room for a scene where the camera locks down on him being sad about his wife and then crying about it and then begging for her to be there and then you know contemplating suicide attempting suicide stopping it and you're there for it like it is so not the funny quippy thing that you think you're getting into when it cuts to all that business and it just elevates the drama of the of the whole story in a way that you know frankly uh, i don't think even the trailer of a steven seagal movie isn't as compelling as that one scene <laughs> i will say i was very surprised at the seriousness of the plot line like to see to see a you know a buddy cop action movie that that deals with mental illness and how like the struggles of people not taking it seriously and then like kind of working through it and coming out of it at the end like i just that's not what i expected it was a really pleasant surprise based off of all of the steven seagal movies that we have had to watch <laughs> it's 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 a real it they they really put an effort into it into the whole story i was very into it yeah. So for me, it's like Mel Gibson, you know, makes this movie. He's just electric. And you really get that his character, Riggs, is in a ton of pain, just like mourning his wife. And he's contemplating suicide. And it's a very believable performance uh, that could have, like, tanked the whole movie if it was, like, done by, like, a lesser performer. I had to explain to my kid who Mel Gibson was. And this was a, an interesting reminder of how good he was back in the day. Like, he was, like, that mega superstar status for, like, Two, close to two decades, I think, because he had so many hits and he was at the forefront of so many massive movies that now he's almost unrecognizable, at least to today's generations. Like my, my son didn't know who Mel Gibson was and I had to explain the whole thing. And the only thing we could kind of compare it to was the Will Smith, Chris Rock situation, because previous to that, Will Smith was this amazing mega superstar. And in the same way that Mel Gibson will never achieve the status he had before, Will Smith probably won't either they've completely changed their brand for the worse and there's no way to come back from it. But back in the day, man, Gibson was a killer actor. He could hit the different ranges, the comedy, the action, like those very, very tender, serious moments that address actual serious issues and make it believable in a movie that 
I mean, we're not on the bad, but I mean, it has a pretty thin story, but it, it's delivered so well that you totally ignore it. The chemistry between him and Danny Glover is so strong that who cares? It's fun to watch. Yeah, so that is like the whole heart of the story is the combination of these two characters, Riggs and, and Murtaugh. Like, because he's a Murtaugh's like a family man with everything to live for. And, and Riggs is the guy on the edge and he takes unnecessary risks because he's not afraid of putting himself in harm's way. So it's like this natural conflict because, uh, you know, it's one, like they're partners, so they depend on each other. And it's all kind of put together by Shane Black, who wrote the script. It's, it's really brilliant in a lot of ways. And if you think about this movie from a continuity standpoint to other films that we have watched, Danny Glover has just um, killed, killed a predator, right? And he uh, has been a hard-boiled cop for a long time. He kills an alien from another world. Then he finally is able to settle down. And, you know, he is a little too old for this shit. And he has a family now. And he's going to have a boat. It's got a front and a back and the water all around. That scene was amazing. Um, but, uh, you know... It's kind of nice to see his uh, character kind of grow. And so since he's used to fighting fighting predators, he's got much more patience for someone as unhinged as uh, as uh, Mel Gibson's character. Isn't it weird that he's not more surprised when he sees Gary Busey though, being that he watched Gary Busey die when he was fighting the predator? <laughs> it's interesting when you think about that that way. But no, but they mistake him a couple of times for other blonde people. That's true. Good right. Point. There's actually a, a moment in the movie where they think they killed him. And it was yeah. Is that moment. him? No. <laughs> yeah. So he's used to that. Uh, Gary Busey as Mr. Joshua is is pretty awesome as a bad guy. He's like, Gary Busey is such a captivating actor, like for good or bad, like, you know, um, but he got himself into great shape for Lethal Weapon. And I was like doing a little bit of research. I know that's usually Andrew's bag, but um, Gary Busey lost 60 pounds. Uh, for Lethal Weapon, and he did karate four hours a day, like training for this movie. So uh, it's pretty badass, actually. Well, the last sequence, the fight scene, they filmed it over four nights, and it employed three different martial arts styles. And they end up actually cutting it down considerably because there's a weird continuity area if you watch it, where the first, like, I don't know, five seconds, uh, they're dry, and then it cuts and they're soaked. <laughs> like, it's a it's a very jarring transition in, during that fight. But they, they they were all, did you see freaking Danny Glover in the bath? The dude had like a wicked six pack on the go. And he's supposed to be 50 in this movie, but he was 40 in real life when they filmed it. But all the three of those guys were in amazing shape. I will say that's definitely in my good. Uh, this was a very nice movie just to be looking at. And uh, Mel Gibson's hair. God, I, I wish that the 80s, the 80s hairstyles for men would come back. It's just good shit. Yeah, are you being look. facetious right now or like no i'm 100 percent. i'm 100 percent. totally real <laughs> okay so if you think that i should purchase a blow dryer leave a comment in the comments below <laughs> and we'll see about bringing some of murphy's uh, wishes yeah can you fluff your hair up that'd be perfect right yeah <laughs> Um, so if you enjoy Inside Movies, um, maybe check out my other channel. I have a, a comic book interview style show. It's called Inside Comics. There's a link at the bottom of, uh, well, in the description of this video and on the on the Inside Movies page. Uh, and all of these uh, fine panelists, uh, TMB Kamichuk, Andrew Buckley, Murphy, have been on Inside Comics. So you can kind of find us chatting about uh, making comic books on that channel or writing novels and it's pretty fun, so give it a watch. Um, but let's get into the bad. What do we not like about Lethal Weapon? They just let them fight in the rain or in the like, in the water. Like the cops just surround them and let them duke it out in the hopes that he will have learned his lesson and not kill the guy. <laughs> yeah, I had that in my bad as well. Like, like it just goes on and on and on and they're like surrounded by people. It's like, why wouldn't the other police officers just like go and like tackle yeah. Gary Busey and arrest him? Well, even further to that point, why would Mr. Joshua even bother going to Murtaugh's house? There was like absolutely zero reason for him to show up there. Revenge. Yeah, that's a real thin. Plus, he was going there when they weren't going to be there. He just left them <laughs> at a crime scene. <laughs> like, why go to the house? It, it doesn't make it doesn't make a ton of sense. Like I said, there's there's some. I mean, Shane Black has written some good stuff and some bad stuff. Lethal Weapon is probably one of his most famous ones, but. It's not like it's a really complex story. There's nothing like really like um, it's the characters. Though. Not a lot of depth. It's really it gets character driven. There's, there's it does feel like an add-on, like um, that 
probably in the original script they had already killed Mr. Joshua. But the only way to ramp up the violence right to the end was to have the fight happen after. No, that's, that's what, was that's what I was going to say. I feel like the only reason that he would go to the house was to give them a good enough reason for them to be able to kill him without them being like, oh my God, you guys are cops. Why did you kill him? So I have a few like kind of nitpicky things like uh, for the bad. Um, like Because I do really like this movie a lot. But uh, like the family goes in to like sing happy birthday to uh, to Danny Glover uh, when he's in the bathtub like naked and it's like his whole family's in there. That's that's weird, man. <laughs> like that didn't make any sense to me. Uh, it is a little weird, but uh, maybe we're just prudes, George. Well, it, ha it happens in every single Lethal Weapon movie too. But in the later ones, like as soon as they go in, they put a towel in the bath over him. But this one they didn't, and I remembered it differently. I'm like, huh, they didn't even bother covering him up. He's just out there, just hanging out, just there, all, Maybe all out on display. Maybe a lot of bubbles. I will, can I mention, uh, uh, this is like a hangover from the good section. We see both characters first, it sounds silly, but they're both naked when we first see them, right? They're introduced to us, like stripped of everything, and we actually see who they really are. He's a family man. Right, and the other guy is like wishes he was a family man, but it's been taken from him. And so, like that juxtaposition, I thought was really good writing, and uh, uh, not just because uh, Murphy and I both wanted to see Mel Gibson's naked butt. <laughs> True. <laughs> 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 Never thought I would agree to that. Would love to go back to what you were saying as as far as Mel Gibson now. I never thought I would be agreeing to that, but you're true. It's true. It's still it's a little hard to watch it and still not have that recurring problem with Mel Gibson that we all have now. <laughs> but it's still I don't know. This movie holds up. I loved it so much. I watched the second and third one of the series right but after. I, so like, I want to see the rest. <laughs> on that topic, uh, fans of the channel will know that we put our complete disdain and hatred for current Steven Seagal aside to watch his movies. So true. And his movies weren't any good to begin with. <laughs> they so. were not bad. Let's not. Come on. We're pretty horrible. Um, yes. So, like, not to get like too political, but I do believe that you can separate someone's art from who they are and still enjoy their art. And so that's what we do here on this channel. Even you know, like obviously Steven Seagal is a pretty big dirtbag, and and uh, Mel Gibson has made some mistakes, but he's an incredible talent for sure. Like undeniably, like a really great talent. Um, but to get back into the bad. Um, I thought it was kind of contrived that uh, Danny Glover's daughter gets kidnapped and they have to have that standoff. Like, they didn't need to do that. Like, the bad guys could have just waited around the house and, like, shot Danny Glover if that's all that, if they just really wanted to get him. Like, they didn't have to take the daughter and then try and do, like, a trade or it just, it just didn't work for me. They did that because they wanted the information, though. They didn't want to just kill Murtaugh. They need to know what he already told, what the, the, the dude, Hunsecker, had already told them so how much the cops knew that was the whole point of that sequence i don't know man i was pretty messed up when i was rewatching this thing <laughs> <laughs> all right then the truth comes out <laughs> also, i was like what's going on why are they doing this and you know this, this is... parts of this movie don't age super well there's some racial slurs uh, there's some homes um uh, homophobic slurs that appear that wouldn't be in a movie ever today but they did definitely put them in this one but this is the one 1987 but it's like the way that the 80s always made um the wise new choices the butt of the joke so like the therapist that's like hey i think he might you know be dangerous to himself or others and the asshole cop boss is like nah well you know it's okay he's tough you know i actually <laughs> thought even though they're playing it as a joke, there, it was actually a pretty realistic depiction of how those kinds of real problems are pushed aside on any job that has that kind of stress. And so it was, I found it surprising on a rewatch that it was being addressed in such a in your face, like we shouldn't deny that he needs real help and it's not a joke. Okay, uh, let's get into the skinny. What's our final grades for Lethal Weapon? Uh, I'll go first. Um, I give it an A+, plus, uh, with incredibly likable characters that have like a realistic conflict with each other uh, and chemistry. Uh, Lethal Weapon is one of the all-time great action movies. Yeah, I agree. Um, I give this movie five. I'm too old for the shits out of five. 
Uh, this thing spawned the Buddy Cop movie. Um, it had, for a 1987 movie, the stunts were really nicely done. The action was great. The chemistry on screen was amazing. I, I still love this movie. I'll give this movie uh, 8 out of 10 uh, naked Mel Gibson butt cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> At least you didn't give it an an odd number because <laughs> then I gotta try and put half a butt cheek on there. That's no, you know, you change it, to, <laughs> change it. You don't want to put the crack too wide. Uh -huh. There was a surprising uh, return to uh, 80s action movies, uh, early 90s fair where it didn't actually make me feel ashamed to have watched it and liked it when I was younger. I'm giving it two out of two buddy cops. It's it is perfect for what it is, and uh, it is actually held up really well. Wait, Murphy, butty cops or butty yeah. cops? <laughs> but, butty cops. Butty cops, all right. <laughs> Two butty cops. Uh, all right, that's going to do it for another episode of uh, Inside Movies. Uh, tune in next week. We're going to start our Johnny Depp month. Uh, I've been George McHale, joined by GMB Kamichuk, Andrew Buckley, and Murphy. Uh, my other YouTube show, uh, Inside Comics, is a, is a fun uh, interview show. Uh, there's a link in the description of this video. Why not check it out? Why, Why not? not? <laughs> Until next time, peace. <laughs>